Ouf Ouf. Bonjour, Monsieur Pete. Bonjour, bonjour, uh, Perspex fist bump. Boosh. Oh God, I'm totally did fall that over safely, didn't there. we? Welcome um, back. Welcome back. Okay, here we go with uh, a sweltering video. It's uh, hot, if man. you're in the UK at the moment, this is uh, what's the date today? Is it the 27th or something? But it's bleeding hot. Yeah, it's, the, it's supposed um, to be the. Th the hottest day of yeah. the year today i think we're going about Thursday. 30 degrees here which if you're in america and don't use that uh, form of heat measurement terminal about 90 degrees fahrenheit it's more than that isn't it like 120 000. No. anyway right <laughs> two notes uh some uh, might say invented this whole idea of you know combining um analog attenuation with dsp digital signal processing to do the whole kind of speaker cabinet emulation hey I th they, they, if they didn't invent it, they were certainly there right at the beginning. Pioneers, um, one would say. Last year, mm -hmm. they came out, last year or year before, they came out with some unbelievably popular, relatively low cost, you know, certainly lower cost than it ever been before, uh, products called the Captor. Captor was basically a, a sort of a load box, bit of attenuation and an analog output. So the idea you could take your valve amplifier, stick a Captor between the amp and the speaker, and have a DI that you could give to a sound man or plug into a desk. Yeah. Captor X, new for 2020, takes that one step further. A little bit of an improvement on the attenuation side. Mahoosive um, upgrade on the, the, the speaker output, the emulated output side. Full DSP, full IR, loader. Attenuator, cabinets, yeah, use it. The watts. works. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and total, it came out in the summer of 2020 mahoosively popular off the first batch, uh, largely, I guess, because the only other products on the market that are similar-ish, being like Oxbox and Boss Tube Amp Expander, are more than twice the price of one of these. Yeah. So, Pete? Yes, darling. That's the overview. Yeah. What were they hearing in that first jam? Were they hearing real amps mic'd up with real cabs? Well, that is the question, isn't it? I'll tell you, you were hearing us play through these. So real amps, real yeah. pedal boards. Real guitars, real humans. Yeah, real humans, <laughs> real fingers. Actually, I say that because I'm a cyborg. Um, but yes, but no cabinets. No. You were hearing the amp plugged into this, plugged straight into our computer interface, and then you're just hearing that straight through your yeah. computer speakers. Yeah. Reverbs are coming either again from the amps or from pedals. Uh, there are reverbs in here as well. Mine actually we'll came from here. You. So you got that right. Okay, so yeah. Pete was using it, I was using yeah. a normal pedal. Yeah. Whatever. So the next section of this video, we're going to run through uh, both rigs with basically a, let's hear the speaker cabinet with like it's no attenuation, yeah. medium attenuation, maximum attenuation. Yeah. And then just hear the captor. So yeah. you want to so take us that. away there, Pete? Yeah. And t I know YouTube's not the best way to demonstrate sort of audio levels in here, but that is the same kind of volume we normally record a video at, yeah. so much louder than you'd probably be able to get away with playing at home, yeah. but, but not like gigging volume as such, just somewhere in between. Yes. So let's go to the first step of the three steps. So this is still the cab, yeah. but now attenuated by the t Captor X. Still the guitar, into there, into there. Random chords. That, that is now, hear. that that I would say is, you absolutely could play at home at that volume level. Yeah. Um, and, but maybe not at the, in the middle of the night. Like if you had a little music room and everyone was cool with you making a teeny bit of noise, yeah. that's that kind of volume level. Yeah, I think that, that probably is more for an overdriven amp where you want to get more cranked amp yeah. sounds out of it. I well, think we'll that do that. Will, you know, you've got a headphone up, but yeah. you might as well use that in the night time if you don't want to wake up the baby. Yeah. So here's the lowest, setting and you are now hearing the lapel yeah we'll just switch to the lapel now because it's so quite if that will enable you to realize that yeah you just talk over that volume so the guitar is almost yeah i can hear the string noise yeah, yeah. as loud as the yeah. yeah uh so 
And just back to the show where we were. Yeah. Back to that. So there we go. Um, That's it. Now. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to do that because we don't need that now. We don't need so that now. So now I've unplugged that. Uh, so next step is to... I've picked a basically a uh, preset in here, preset one, and then I fiddle a bit with the reverb because the reverbs are always kind of probably the thing you fiddle with, right? So let me just turn the reverb up here. Off. Off. Yeah. Right. So, so off on the amp. Off on the amp. All the reverb from the captor now, captor X. Yeah. I'm going to turn back up. I think I was about there. No cabinet now, straight into the mixer. Yeah, that's all you're hearing. And we're hearing small speakers in the room. So here the reverb is, is different from that because you've got loads of different reverbs yeah, in Yeah, we'll talk in a here, bit about you know. that in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, so then you go, that's a clean amp. So how does it take overdrive? Um, should we go back and have a listen first with the... With oh, the just, I'll, because I've got an overdrive channel, just, just okay. bang a pedal yeah, over the top got, of the, the uh, torpedo thing. Yeah, so torpedo? I'll, I'll torpedo. just put the, uh, <laughs> I'll just put the Dane on about 12 o'clock here, so... Uh, <laughs> Any sense of latency? Nothing. Don't know. That's, that's, like, well, that's a probably a, a, a good question, actually. Uh, would it be that a lot of people don't talk about? What does it feel like? Yeah. Because you are going through, you know, guitar into there and into that, and then they're coming in here, and then there's a, there's a here's some some DSP processing, stuff yeah. processing going on. Actually, it feels it feels really. I've not noticed any latency no, when I've been not fiddling. Really, but... I think, and I think that whole thing has been, you know, now we're so far ahead in, in processing power yeah. and all that stuff that that is almost. You're not detached from so, it anyway. Sounds good. Sounds to, great it to did me. sound good to me. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely worth noting as well. Even though there is attenuation built in here, it's absolutely amps are completely. You don't have to have the cabinet attached. You 100. Uh, this is an eight-ohm box. We'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about that at the end. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cabinet does not have to be attached. Now no. we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with my setup, I have got oh, coffee a Friedman Runt. 50 mm. attached to mine and mm. I've got a feeling that when I take the attenuation off it's going to be really loud well, let's much see. much louder than I'm going to keep an eye because there's only Lee and me in the room yeah. today so I'm yeah. going to keep an eye on the screen <laughs> okay I've got two channels I've got a clean channel which I probably can and I've got a reverb pedal through the effects loop of the amp yeah. here just because uh, it doesn't have you know it's, yeah. don't have to do that Probably if I was only using the Captor X, I probably would just use the reverbs that are in here, but because I'm switching between the amp and the cab and the Captor X, it was just easier to put a reverb pedal through the loop. Yeah. If I go to the gain channel, I say I might have to jump up and adjust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. <laughs> okay, well, no, just a quick just... intermission. This, there is, we this go. is probably gigging level, isn't that it? That is slow. Uh, that is loud. Boosted. Woo! Okay, crazy loud. What? That, I, mean, I mean, loud, is, loud, is, loud, loud. Yeah, but, that's very, very loud. Well, if you've got an amp like that, it's kind of where you want it, right? Um, you so, want it loud, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, got that right. So now we're in the first stage of attenuation on the captor. So I don't know, we might even need to turn the, the well, let's have a listen. That's, we're it's, now back to a similar level to what Pete was on the second stage of attenuation. Notes, they sound so uh, good. And then maximum attenuation, where again, we'll just go back to, you might as well just hear the lapel mic now. Mm. 
Yeah. It still sounds super, good, man. Super, super quiet. It still sounds good. Now, uh, let's go over to the, the captor, just the captor. So here's my, you know, so that you know we're not, there's no jiggery pokery. One, jiggery pokery. One cabinet out here. Turn the volume up on here. And... <coughs> Sounds good in the room. It sounds great in the room. Yeah. Um, and we're incredibly quiet. Now, so that there's your idea. Now, I was using um, what what we what I suppose we've got to go into a little bit of detail as to, to how we got that. Yeah. Um, there's no sense of like Kemper modeling, and we haven't done we haven't tried to create IRs of the actual no. cabs that we're doing. So I don't necessarily think that that the purpose of that little run through there was for you to go, oh, I couldn't hear a difference. That's amazing. You will hear a difference because obviously, you know, the cabinets that we've chosen are ones that we A, like, and B, I suppose we've tried to sound similar, but they're not, yeah. they're no, not the same cabs. I, I think for um, me, it's about listening through, you know, not going, oh, do I like the 112 with that speaker yeah. or this, or is that that microphone or that? I think, you, you know, or oh, that is what I like because it might not sound like you're used to. Yeah. So I think finding the, 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 what, you know, people, I've had some questions, people saying, oh, I've got a victory amp and I would like to have a 2x12 victory cab in mm. my, it was like, yeah, but it might not sound like that if you got it. Because, do you know what I mean? So yeah. you have to, you can get IRs, you can load in here because it's an IR loader as well. So I guess you can do that. You can find, I've got one here where I've got two um, uh, creamback speakers in it, you know, but actually, even though there's two creambacks in here, it doesn't really sound the same. No. So I that's the, this is what I mean. Because um, of course you're the, the what's happening on the pushing, digital side yeah. of, of the of the captor, captor X, sorry, is not only is it so so what an IR it, a lot of you will know what IRs are and you'll be familiar with using those. You know, the IRs have been available to guitar players to use as cabinet emulations for a few years yeah. now. If you're not familiar, it's IR stands for impulse response. They are created, they are digital sort of recreations of environments. Everything really. So you get you get a speaker cabinet. You get some actual microphones. Yeah. You place the Where microphones goes, in a certain way. Back, you record you know. it in a certain room. You know, da da da. Yeah. And that creates an impulse response. Yeah. And then you apply that impulse response to a sort of a dry guitar amplifier out signal. Yeah. And it removes the need to have a speaker cabinet. Yeah. Um, what it and there are there are. Different brands have different ways of, of doing that. So if you look at um, one of the more you know one of the most popular um, attenuators and speaker simulators of the last couple of years, which is the Universal Audio Oxbox, yeah, they do their own proprietary speaker emulations. Yep. So you know there's not much to tweak on those. It's almost like they've just gone look. These are the best ones. Just use these. Yeah. Uh, Captor X is what's called an open source IR. So you anybody in the world can create IRs. You can then um, download those into your Captor X. Yeah. Of course, what that means with Captor is, on the one hand, you have infinite flexibility. On the other hand, you also have perhaps a certain element infinite, of kind uh, of um, paralysis. Yeah. Like you know, th there's too many sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think interestingly, that's that's one of the things that that's becoming that is being addressed over time, in that you've you've got people selling packs now, so well respected artists and studio engineers will go here's my pack of six cabinets just buy that well i and use for be, my amps, yeah, yeah and they'll and, and i think that will remove a lot of the option paralysis that you get with this yeah um but i think you know both pete and i were really really happy with the tones that we've got yep uh and we would happily happily sit and record our guitars play our guitars through small speakers all day long um, yeah, which is a video we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna probably try to do an A/B test on is it better to have a small home practice amp or yeah. if you've got a setup at home with a tube amp mm. and some pedals, is it better to buy that? You know, so that's a different video in so, the future. Yeah. So right now, again, Captor X is is out. Um, it's super super popular. It'll work with. Um, it, it is a, 
It is a little different to um, the, the Boss Tube Amp Expander and the, and the Universal Audio Oxbox. Yeah. The reason it's so small is the attenuator that they've used in here um, is, will only work with an 8 ohm load. It doesn't have the, the 4 to 8 to 16 switching that the other amps have. Uh, and it just has a, a three-way stepped attenuation. Yeah. Um, the other, the, the, the boss has, actually the boss, you'll have to go and watch the, that but, video because yeah. it does it a little bit differently, Shoot but it up, almost yeah. has like infinite levels. Yeah, it's a different, it's a different uh, way And the Ox it. has a five-way switch. Um, but as I said, Captor is half the price. So we've already sold more Captor Xs in the last month than we've probably sold tube amp expanders and Oxboxes in the last year. Um, it's a great little tool, it yeah. really is. And, and the, the, the software is really intuitive for, for people still. Yep, where... that's, that's a good shout. So what, straight out the box, with, without connecting to anything, uh, you have six presets on the front. Yeah, you've really got to connect this to either your phone or to a laptop for for um, you know to get to get more out of it. Yeah. So if you just connect it via Bluetooth to a Bluetooth device, you'll find there are actually 32 cabinets in there, and then that's how you get to all the reverbs and the EQs and some of the other clever features like double tracking, moving and all this microphone kind of stuff. back and yeah. forth and behind the front um, and then get back to cabin. And then Someone. when you connect it to your computer, so Mac or PC, um, you've then got infinite you've got all the irs in the world and yeah. the idea is you you tell this which 32 do you want so when you next go to the gig you, or what you know if you're out and about you've you saved it on 32 you can, yeah, on your you phone can, yeah. and of course if you for, for i guess for gigging musicians the ultimate if you don't want to connect anything to this and you just want your six favorite presets yeah. that's that can be stored in here yeah uh, and then, as, as Pete said, you've got volume control, you've got um, voicing, which is like a sort of a mid-range EQ thing, and the space effect, which which controls the kind of the ambientness of yeah. it. I mean, I don't know. I, I think to keep this video short, we Pete and I, there are a bucket load of features when you get into IRs. Oh yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a deep it's a bottom hole, it's, it? Once you go in there. We both got mm. one of this sent one to my house and I sat home and I started getting into it and trying to load IRs into it and which is all really simple actually compared to for instance the two band expander yeah. where you have to have a loader to load that into that right. and you can only see the first bit of the line you don't know yeah. which one it, you know um so it's really simple but it's just a rabbit yeah. hole i mean three hours later and you're still going did i like yeah. the first sound better than the one i've spent that, three hours doing that is so individual, it's all personal. Yeah, you that, know. I, I would say that that you'll know yourself as a as a guitar player. You know, if you're, I mean, at one end of the extreme is the guy that just says, you know what, I've just got an AC30 and I just plug my guitar into it and I just go. And yeah. I don't want any more faff than that. Yeah. And then at the other end, you've got guys who are using plugins all day long for their guitar sounds, or they've perhaps they're into their Kemper profiling, or they've got a yeah. Helix, and, you know, and, and it, they want stereo and all yeah, sorts and, and of stuff. Yeah, and for those guys, this is going to be so simple, like yeah. sort of walk in the park stuff. I, I think I'm probably somewhere in between, definitely nearer the technophobe side than the. I want a picture, and I want to click that, and I'm going to go. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. Next, that sounds yeah. good as well. I don't, I don't like, you know, you pick one, and yeah. you stick with that. So I think my my attention span. I was happy fiddling for like five to ten minutes, and then I start to just you go, drift off and think um, of something. Yeah, else. I'm bored now. So <laughs> I, and I, you, you know, so I, there's no, you know, I think I am that guy that's just going to go look. I don't, I don't know if Michael Britt's done any patches on this yet, but he I should. You know, yeah, if he hasn't, he should. I certainly trust. You know, he's he's a kind of guy that that he all his Kemper profiles are amazing. Yeah. He's kind of known for doing and and his uh, Line Six stuff. Yeah. he does. And so if he sort of said, oh, here's my here's some Captor X. Packed. I, I've got a feeling someone like Joey Landreth has done some. So, yeah, you know, I think so. Cool. But I think so. Another thing is, I think it really depends on what amp mm. you're using. You know, are you using a clean amp, are you using an amp with a mm. with a master volume, are you using a hundred watt amp, mm. are you using a fifty. You know, what kind of tone is it? Is it a yeah. overdriven tone? Is the preamp really gaining? And do I need V30s? Yeah. Do I need Celestians? What do I need? You well, know? we've talked for lots. Way here. too lots. I'm, We're rambling. I'm conscious of the fact that that's the boring part of the video. So Pete's going to just do some playing and also show you what the screen grab on his phone looks exactly. like. Exactly, really quick, because you've got so many options again. So you can see here on the first bit of the screen, you've got my cabinet, you've got my two microphones set up there. Uh, one is a ribbon and one is a dynamic 57. You can choose the distance and the axis where you are, you know, compared to the ox where you only get there or there, and that's it. You know, here you can literally move them around. 
Um, I'm not going to do that because I like this sound. So if I do that, that that'll yeah. be it. You know, you can and move you got it around. About ten different microphones you can choose as well, as well as uh, here you zillions got, of different you got cabs. Loads of different mic so, microphones here. You can choose loads of different cabs: one twelve, two twelve, four tens. You know, that's just and two. you've just got the stuff that comes out of the box. Haven't this you? Is you the, haven't even no, started all downloading. I, all stuff, I basically you? did was yeah. I faffed around trying loads of stuff, and I just pick number one which is called heavy dry <laughs> and i thought that sounded really good with this amp yeah yeah so that was the thing you know and um then if you you know if you see when i play here you can see the input level just scroll and the output left and level. right with the cab just yeah. to show them a couple of different cabs. okay so if you just i could just go to another cab so so, it's so that easy. imagine doing that like all day all day long through you know hundreds of cabs uh, and it's, it's literally that easy. You just scroll through the cabs and then you can scroll through the microphones. You can move the microphones back and forth there. You can see the distance. And then you double tap and it goes back to, to zero. Um, but I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna load that back in, I think, because uh, there we go. That's the first one you see. But then, and I went to the second page and that's where you can see there's a studio reverb. I then chose the plate reverb. You've got all of these reverbs, plate. That's actually not bad, is uh, it? Straight up. Straight out of the box, it's not bad at all. Get a bit more volume. On the front there, so. And then you've got the cool thing, you can sort of double tap on them and it'll set in the middle. The space you can see, when I turn the space on the front, it'll react with the voicing and that in here. You've got a little detente as well. So you've got, um, that's too much reverb, isn't it? I think so. I never had too much. Reverb. So you can see you've got these little blocks here. You've got uh, post effects. Uh, one is EQ that you just turn on and off by touching it. You've got an enhancer, which is um, just gives you body thickness and brilliance. Then you've got the reverb, which you can turn on and off. You can choose the size. You can see if there's a room and size and echo and color, all that different stuff. Then you've got um, down here, the outputs are stereo. So you can have stereo like this. You can have dual mono, like so. Amazing how different basically summing two parts into dual mono versus hearing them stereo is, yeah. isn't it? You wouldn't think that they would sound matte, but anyway, there it's you go. It's crazy, and also that's a cool feature because you can do wet dry signal, so you can choose to have, you know, the, the wet on the left side or the dry on the right side or whatever. Just by changing a uh, tiny little switch there with your fingers, and then you can choose the gain and all sorts of stuff, and the monitor EQ, and oh, you know, that's where I, that's where you really have to get yeah. the t put the time in, and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to switch back to the uh, stereo. Can we show the double tracking? Exactly. This is the cool thing because these have got uh, so much processing power that probably in the future they'll add more things mm -hmm. as we go along. Uh, the twin tracker is basically. It's like having a twin that plays slightly behind you. Uh, so when I click that, it just gives you like a millisecond of mm. delay. So take that off. I don't. I don't know how much of that is a is a feature that. I mean, certainly in rock and metal guitar, the idea of double tracking your guitar yeah, when you, part yeah, is yeah, so yeah. normal. Yeah. And the, the idea clean. behind this is that you just don't you don't have to actually play it in twice. You just have the double tracker effect. Exactly. I don't know if that's a some a technique that clean guitar players tend to use much, but it certainly fattens the sound up. They can do now. Yeah. Uh, I'll take that back off. Just really quickly show you the uh, the enhancer switch because that's pretty cool. Um, Add body to it. Add thickness to it. Or add brilliance. And it really changes the sound. So again, yep. you get so much different different options to make your sound right, you know, yeah. um, in your speakers and in your recordings, because it all depends on what music are you recording in yeah. what, and all that stuff. Uh, so to me, I mean, mm. 
when you can add. I mean, uh, it's, 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 the possibilities I, I, are endless. Yeah, I mean, the, so those screens that you just saw on Pete's phone, that'll work on an iPad or a bigger tablet as well. Yeah. And they, they are Caps, uh, exactly presets. the same also when you're connected to your computer, that just the layout is a little different. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I think the nice thing on a computer screen is you can see everything on one screen, yeah. whereas on a mobile, you've got to squeeze exactly. between two screens. Last, um, lastly, before we move on, yeah. Lastly, I saved in a um, DP Dual Cream bag. Oh, so, did you? Which I loaded some impulse responses, and you can then see it comes up here. One is a, I think these, I'm not sure where I got it from. I think Rabir lent me some to check out. Uh, one is a 2 by 12 fat boy on one side, and a 112 ported, both cream bag eights. Ooh. One is a uh, 57 close, and one is a C1414 is that a close. Lesson? So I, I know that I need to turn it up slightly, but because the it's saved with a little bit lower yeah. input. So, but this is put EQ on. More body and a bit more thickness in there. So that so that's that's how you can go from a, f a preset w which is you know n just a, a preset. I can save that into here as well if I want to. Let me go back to that one, change the reverb back to where we were played, and then this is the this is back to the original. One. <laughs> sounds the other one sounds a bit more open because you've got two different caps on each side. Anyway, it's uh, it's uh, it's a great piece of kit. Yeah, um, I mean. I, well, we're going to jam out. I mean, my, my final thoughts on this, because you're sort of going, what's the, <laughs> well, I, I, maybe I've got two thoughts. F first and foremost is like, so what is the point of people buying 212s and 412s and anything anymore? You know, it's like <sighs> really, I guess for a live thing, you've got to have some sort of, you know, you couldn't go and play live with a pair of little studio monitors. Like Depends that, on know, the you, front of house guy these days. Well, no, what I mean, if they, <laughs> say there was no front of house, you know, it's like, I suppose you could do everything in ear. Couldn't, but look, there's yeah. certainly, there's something, there's still something exciting that for me, this kind of technology can't recreate. And that's the excitement that volume and air moving creates. Yeah. And there's still something about the electric, I think it's, you know, we all know that turning a valve amplifier up sounds good. Yeah. But I think what we miss sometimes is that there's an element of going, when you've got a, a, a speaker that's been designed to run high sound pressure levels, you know, la make a loud noise. Yeah. When you run that loud and you get it to do the job it's designed to do, it absolutely adds another dynamic, a po you know, a positive dynamic, something good to the sound. And, and the human ear, the brain response to loud noises is, again, it's like it's, if you get it right, it's one of excitement that you, you don't generate if that volume isn't there. Um, and of course, you know, there's those, the physical dynamics that happens when a guitar starts to feel back and all that It's a, it's a feel thing. Of, yeah. It's a feel thing. So I, I kind of think, you know, that still that will still exist and that will still mean that I think guitar players will still go, oh man, if if... if Money was no object, volume was no object, environment was no object, everything. I still think that's, that's the nirvana of sound, isn't just it? Just add to that, when I go in the studio, my, if, what I prefer to do is to have the, because you always have the amps in the different rooms. Mm -hmm. So you'll have two or three amps in the other room, and then you'll sit in the other side and you'll yeah. record through that. I prefer to go into the yeah. room with the amps, yeah. put headphones on and have it slamming loud yeah. and then feel yeah, the amps yeah. when you're doing something because so, it's just a different experience. So I think I think that, we're still sort of going, I, I still understand that we're not replacing that experience yet. However, when I got Two Notes sent Pete and I one of these free, in fairness, I think Two Notes have done quite a clever job in terms of getting the message out in here because it, it feels like anybody with a half decent YouTube channel has been given <laughs> one of these. Um, which is, but which hey, is the way not? to do it? You know, it's probably cheaper to do that than it is to take a 10 page advert out in a guitar oh. magazine. Um, but so my office rig where I have to play at really low volume yeah. levels, and th this is a genuine experience. So, so I started with a, I started with a little, 
Yamaha THR, which I changed to a little Vox Adio. But you know, those little purpose-built, mm-hmm. very low. Yeah. And, and I, for what they are, they, will, they continuously blow me away. Then I got this little 5-watt, very high-end valve amplifier with a, with a 12-inch speaker in it. And I realized that, again, even a 5-watt valve amplifier, if it's got that size of speaker in it, mm-hmm. doesn't want to play quiet. No, it needs to be. You know, I mean, it's not like... It needs power. Marshall Plexi loud, but it's still way too loud for for home. And when you do go, I'll just literally get it on that position on the volume knob between like naught and one. And it sounds okay, but you can feel the whole thing's going, it's like the dog on a leash, isn't it? Like, come on! Um, So actually I went back to just using the Yamaha. And then when I got this, I thought, oh, right, let's try a different, a completely different setup here. Normal valve guitar, I've got a 30 watt valve amplifier straight into this. This then into, I've got a little pair of Genelec speakers that I use for my computer desktops. Mm-hmm. They're tiny, they literally, they're the 8010s. They're quite, they're reasonably pro, aren't yeah, they? They're, but yeah, they're, but they're, like, they're well, super yeah. small. Yeah. So guitar, valve amplifier, into the Captrex, into the little Genelec 10s. And then I also, I use a little mixer as well so that I can get my um, uh, iTunes to play through From the little Genelecs as well. And it's the best office sound <laughs> I've ever had. And, and the, the sort of the, the final statement, I think, before the jam is so the question I'm asked more than anything else on Facebook and Instagram and stuff is what's the best valve amp for home use? Yeah. And it was never an easy answer. I was almost like, I'm not sure there is one. And that's why Yamaha THR, etc., is so popular and da, 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 da. But my answer now is any valve amp that you like and one of these or, or, or an ox or a tube amp expander, you know, a, yeah. a, 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 we need to do that shootout in another video. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But this into a little pair of decent studio monitors, that's... Yeah, so that's, that's the question, the isn't it? Do you want to spend it's just 469 money. Yeah, it's just money. or four, whatever it is on this or do you want to buy yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Yamaha? Yeah, if it's you've just got the amp already, absolutely. you know. It's, it's my, yeah, this you, is, this you is you a can, no-brainer then. Yeah, the, you could have a little Yamaha or a little Boss for, for, for less than one of these. And of course, if you've got a valve amp, you've got some pedals, you've got one of these, you've got a little pair of Genelix, you're going to spend two or 3,000 quid all of a sudden. But <laughs> if money is not the object and the object is what's the best, best sound that I can get at home and play quietly, million percent. One of these decent little pair of studio monitors, and then whatever your favourite valve amp and pedal combination is. Anyway, that's it. I think Come most on. people are going to say, "Have you got it set up in your office?" Yeah. I think most people in their office so they have a guitar in their office. Well, my, so, but then know. I don't really play at home, <laughs> so my office is my little home. Anyway, anyway, jam out. Very cool. Links are below for these. Uh, they are super duper duper cool, and they do super much oh, so and- much stuff. And I know I said this is an eight, eight ohm version, so it would only run with eight ohm amps. That should cover about seventy percent of guitar amps. Yeah. Uh, there's a sixteen ohm one coming uh, within the next month or two, so that'll cover another sort of twenty nine percent of amps. Yeah. And those of you that need a four ohm one, then I'm sorry, there isn't going to be one. But that is that's like maybe some bass yeah. players do. They do yeah. the, they do the normal captor. For I think you could buy the normal 16. captor and then maybe their cab M or something together, and you might yeah. get sort of yeah. captor X. Absolutely sort of stuff but yeah, yeah there's not going to be a, a switchable homage version of this lots anyway, of things lots of bosh. things Go thank you very much for below. watching see you later sorry we talked a lot at the end there but <laughs> but i thought that was good yeah i thought, thought that was good i thought that was good let's let's play out good